Hello everyone, this is JV back again and welcome back to my channel. In this vlog, we are going to talk about how to pass anatomy and histology. So if you guys are interested, then keep on watching. So if you guys are new to my channel, I am JV, an incoming second year medical student from St. Luke's Medical Center, College of Medicine, William H. Quasha Memorial. Yes! So in this vlog, we are going to start a new series and it's going to be called How to Pass That Subject. In this particular episode, we are going to talk about how to pass anatomy and histology. So this series aims to help you guys pass that medical school course by giving you guys tips and tricks and some of the references that I think are high yield or are very helpful that helped me survive that particular subject in medical school. So in this episode, we are going to be focusing on anatomy and a little bit of histology because these courses are usually offered together in your first year of medical school. So the video is divided into two parts, the first one being my tips and tricks for you guys on how to pass anatomy and histology, and the second part is going to be just a list of references that you guys can consult for studying anatomy and histology. So let's go! So first tip, do not try to memorize every single thing in anatomy and histology because it's endless and it could be overwhelming especially for a first year medical student like you. So the second tip that I could give you guys is for you guys to study anatomy and histology at the same time because sometimes it's easier for you guys to understand the function of the structure if you know its composition like what cells is it made of kind of thing. So they go hand in hand so try to like study them at the same time so the next thing that i will share with you guys is something that my anatomy professor likes to tell us and it's imagine things so it's imagination in anatomy imagination is as important as trying to memorize every single detail because sometimes they don't really ask you the specific location of that particular organ they usually ask their positions relative to another organ so that you know how it's related to the liver or for example to the heart and stuff like that. So the last tip that I will share with you guys is to attend lab sessions. Yes, I know they could be boring sometimes and they could be less interesting sometimes, at least for me. But it's easier to imagine things if you actually saw them. This will also help you see things in a bigger picture because you don't just see one organ because you don't see that in the book. So, I mean, it's easier basically to see it in person than just seeing like a photograph or a cartoonized version of that particular organ. So now let's go to the references and I know that most of you guys came here for this. So let's start with the references. First with anatomy. So the first reference on the list is the Netter's Human Anatomy Atlas. Yes, this is considered to be the Bible of I think every single physician in the world even if you're not a medical student anymore you still consult this book because it's the Bible it's the holy book of medicine it is for me a really good book and you must have it either like a physical version or like a PDF version you should have it because it's very helpful especially the one that I told you earlier if you don't have time to go to labs or like you missed a lab session then this could suffice you just consult like the table of contents and then like find a particular system or organ and then you know voila you're gonna have it sometimes it could be a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of things in there but you know just try to pick the ones that your professor gave emphasis to so the next reference that i will recommend for you guys is the first aid for the basic sciences organ systems it is actually a very organized reference. It initially divides it into organ systems like for example, cardio, respi, or GIT. And when you check for example, respiratory, it's further subdivided into embryology, anatomy, and physiology. So it's a good reference. It's very well organized. The only disadvantage that I saw in this book is that it's not really like as comprehensive as other books, but it's good enough for you to get like a good overview or a background of that particular system the next one is my favorite like it is my favorite i cannot stress this enough it's the first aid us emily step one i don't know why i didn't ask my best friend before entering med school and that i didn't ask for this particular you know reference because this is very 
high yield like says it's very high yield so it gives you very good mnemonics it makes concepts very easy to understand and i feel like it's a complete reference already though it doesn't talk about the concepts in depth but it will give you a lot of knowledge high yield knowledge so this is actually meant for you to review the concepts already so that it assumes that you have like a good background of it so if you don't have a good background then you can consult the first aid for the basic sciences or again systems and they should go hand in hand if you have these references i feel like you're gonna have an easier time in medical school especially in anatomy what I love about this book is that it gives you like really great visuals and the mnemonics are like helpful, very helpful. And it also gives you a very good overview of all the topics that like gives you like what you have to know when you go to the medical field. So I feel like even if you are a physician already and you can like forget some stuff, which I hope I won't forget stuff. But yeah, you know, if you just forget then you can actually go to this book and I'm pretty sure it should have it, at least the basic ones. The next reference is the BRS Anatomy and I know that it is one of the most popular anatomy reference out there because it's BRS. So like it's meant to be used by those who are going to take the boards but you know it helps us as well, first year medical students, to prepare for the exam. So this I would recommend you to consult this maybe a few days before the exam to just check whether or not you covered some of the more important details in anatomy it is already you know like trimmed down to like the what you have to know but then after each section as well it also has like a high yield section that gives you like the must knows from the must knows so you know, if you just want to assess yourself or like want to make sure if you know like a lot about anatomy already, then you should consult this one. So the disadvantage of using BRS anatomy is that it is meant for you to prepare for an exam. Do not use this as your only reference for anatomy because I don't think it is comprehensive enough. But a few days before the exam, you can definitely consult this one. So the last reference that I would share with you guys for anatomy is the high yield neuroanatomy. Neuroanatomy is probably one of the hardest anatomy lessons so you need a good reference for it. And for me, high yield neuroanatomy is high yield and will save your life. It is a very comprehensive neuroanatomy book. It talks about a lot of clinical correlations which is I think the more important aspect of the book. Like for example, what happens if the lateral spinothalamic tract is you know cut or something and it will give you like um, a good overview of what's gonna happen of course it's not as detailed as if when you're studying like neurology as a particular subject but of course it gives you that kind of overview that you need as a first year so now let's go to histology and for histology i am only going to recommend two references and the first one is going to be Junkera's Basic Histology Text and Atlas. Junkera for me is the key reference for histology. It presents actual histological slides in the book but at the same time presents you guys with a cartoonized version of that slide for easier understanding and for more appreciation. I must admit that I don't necessarily read the entire chapter when we're discussing a particular chapter but it actually discusses the topics really well and very comprehensive and it has like a summary box at the end of each chapter so if you guys are cramming or don't have enough time to go through the entire chapter then you guys can consult this particular high yield summary box and then you should be good to go to be honest i feel like you will survive histology even if you just have this particular reference but i'm going to recommend the second as well, it's going to be the BRS Histology. For me, I don't really consult this that much because, you know, Junkera is actually my main or like my go-to reference for histology. But, you know, if I feel like, you know, I feel like I want to study more, which is basically like 1% of the time, I consult BRS Histology. Again, BRS is a part of the BRS family and it is meant to be used by those who are going to take the boards already but 
it also helps you somehow in preparation for your exams in first year medical school. So for histology, I only pick two and I only use this two. Sometimes I consult the first aid USMLE step one for more histological correlations or like histological concepts, but my main go-to for histology is Junkera. So if you guys are wondering, just in case, if I have these references like hard bound or like the hard copy of these references, I actually don't. I have the soft copies of the references because, you know, number one, I don't like bringing books to school and number two, it saves you a lot of money. So, you know, don't buy the books if you don't want to spend so much. So before we end, I just want to remind everyone that these references worked for me and the tips that I gave you worked for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. So if you guys have time, try to explore the references I recommended and check which ones you think will help you succeed in anatomy and histology. So before you leave, I hope that you guys can subscribe to my channel for more pre-med and medical school related stuff. And I will see you again on our next vlog. Bye years!